Oh, hello. I didn't see you. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, this is Andrew Kircher from Port Huron Museum. Uh, this is uh, a day, I'm not sure what, of our live video series uh, that we have been doing. Now, unfortunately, today, as you can see, it is very dreary out. It is raining. I didn't particularly want to go for a walk. I think we'll be at this for a while. So today's maybe uh, not the best day to do uh, morning time, uh, uh, one of our field trips. So instead, um, I got another idea, something else we could talk about. Now, uh, anybody who knows me knows that I really enjoy hats. I like historic uh, headwear. Um, that's something that's always interested me. Um, there was a pretty neat article they actually wrote the other day about our historic field trips in the Times Herald. Uh, it was posted online and I imagine it'll be maybe in tomorrow's paper. And like the first sentence said like, Oh, you know, I, I showed up, it was talking about how I was doing these field trips. I said I was wearing a bowler. I wasn't wearing a bowler. I was wearing a fedora. Um, it's a pretty minor distinction, but it gave me an idea. I said, well, what's something I know about that I can talk about, uh, inside, uh, my house? And I decided that was going to be, uh, hats. So I pulled out just a few of, uh, my historic hat collection, and I thought we could talk a little bit about some of the different styles. So, um, I guess first things first. You can see what I'm wearing right now, something we probably all recognize. It's a pretty uh, unique hat. It's a fez. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun. Fit well with a nice indoor comfortable theme and my uh, ascot here and something you'd wear when you were just lounging around the house, which I'm doing today. So these were popular, of course, uh, in the Mediterranean, but in the 19th century, the 1800s, people uh, in the Western world were getting interested in these ideas from the exotic East and started wearing, you know, fun things. I like that's really comfortable. It's just nice. You kind of forget it's there. Uh, it's famous later on the uh, Shriners, uh, of course, adopt these. and it's where most people know these from. But all right, so here's the big distinction I want to talk about. There was some confusion in the article. This is the hat I was wearing yesterday. This is one of my absolute favorite hats. Now, uh, my fiance actually gave me uh, this hat. One of the things that I think is really cool about it, so it's a fedora. You can tell it's got kind of a pinched crown. So the crown is the top part of the hat, and the brim, of course, is the part on the outside. It's got kind of a pinched crown. But the thing that I like about this hat is where it's from. This is an Andy Thomas hat. Uh, so 215 Huron Avenue. This was a hat sold right here in Port Huron. Uh, Zachary asks, where can you buy a fez? So I'll tell you a little bit about all of my hats. I pick a lot of them up in antique stores, flea markets. Uh, you never know exactly uh, where you are going to find them. I keep my eyes out. Trick is know your hat size. I am about a seven and a quarter if anybody finds a cool hat. Um, seven and a quarter to seven and a half, right around there. And you always know what you can find. So like I said, this is a cool local hat. We know this kind of hat was worn in Port Huron. This hat was sold uh, in Port Huron. Now, uh, a bowler hat is actually quite a bit different. Um, sometimes these are called a derby. Uh, this is another hat I picked up at an estate sale uh, here in town. This last owner here, I think had the initials BFM. So um, I'm not sure this is... Um, whose hat it was, but it fits me really, really well. And you'll notice um, there's a pretty big difference uh, between <laughs> these two hats uh, and the kind of style uh, that they have. Uh, so this hat is actually pretty solid. Uh, these actually kind of predate um, the fedoran style. You see these bowlers, sometimes, like I said, called a derby, going back into the 19th century. Um, I guess there was some idea that, you know, gentlemen might be wearing these if you were on horseback. And if you were on horseback, if you've ever ridden a horse or been up high, uh, like on a high wheel bicycle, something like that, that a gentleman might be riding, uh, tree branches are always kind of a fear. So this is not really a helmet, but gives you a little bit of more solid uh, protection. And obviously, these are kind of a staple. There are people who still wear these today. I mean, I do. Uh, so um, these are still popular with uh, some people, but especially see them very, you know, conservative businessmen wearing them uh, in England and places like that. But kind of a different style. Um, another famous duo you see like Laurel and Hardy famously wore a derby or a bowler like this, but just a different style of hat. Uh, and those two are pretty easy to tell apart. 
here's where it gets tricky. When you get things like a trilby. Now, these a lot of people will call a fedora. Uh, but you'll notice some difference. So it has kind of that same teardrop shape around the head. This is another one I just picked up in an antique store. This one's probably from uh, maybe the mid-60s or so. But the big difference is the brim got a lot smaller. And sometimes the brims were even bigger. I've got another hat here that I really enjoy. This one is another uh, fedora. And you can see this one dates back uh, to the 40s. See, it has an even bigger uh, brim. Uh, just like with other kinds of fashion, it kind of ebbs and flows and changes um, as the years go by. And obviously, uh, these are just a, a small example. I've got actually this really handy like hat storage device here in my wall so I can store a bunch of different hats and different colors uh, and things like that for different uh, occasions. But so just like with other fashion, things change uh, as it ebbs uh, and flows. Uh, but generally speaking, the brims got smaller the closer to today that we see. And obviously not a lot of people wear hats today. I like them. Some people do. Uh, but you'd have a hard time going to a store to buy uh, a fur felt hat like this. I should say maybe a comment on the material briefly. Now, this is another uh, Dobbs hat here. This one is from Detroit. Um, but the material is uh, usually a, a fur felt. Um, and that fur felt uh, usually comes from things like rabbit, sometimes beaver, if it's a really high-end hat. They take the fur, um, kind of mat it together, and it turns into a felt material, and you can put that on a stretcher and turn it into uh, a shape. You might use a hatter's block here. This is a, a, a cool piece I picked up, an antique um, military uh, piece of headgear. But I've got it here uh, on, uh, if we can shift that off here, uh, a hat block. So these are, uh, kind of looks like a human head. This is a way that you can stretch and shape hats or keep them in their shape if um, they're particularly vulnerable. Now, another hat that's frequently confused uh, with fedoras, uh, this is a pork pie hat. And here's the big difference between the pork pie hat. It's got that wider brim, but you'll notice it doesn't have a teardrop shape. It's round. Um, I like that one because it's brown. Again, you see sometimes uh, guys will wear those uh, with the front of them uh, popped up kind of like that. It's um, all depends on the exact style you're going for, what kind of outfit you're wearing with to match it. But again, there's small distinctions. I notice it. Maybe a lot of other people don't. Um, some summer hats I have. Um, this is a Panama hat. Now, um, sometimes you will see uh, hats like this is made out of straw. Obviously, this is really nice for spring and summer wear uh, because it's basically made out of a woven straw material, so it breathes really well. Uh, this one I got um, from Ecuador. I ordered it actually from a seller in line. Sometimes antique versions of these straw hats don't hold up as well. Uh, but this one uh, is newly made, but in this kind of classical style. It's got this ridge. Now, they're called Panama hats, but they're actually made in Ecuador, um, and it comes from around the time of building the Panama Canal. Just about everybody on site was wearing one of these. Teddy Roosevelt visited down there. He put one of these on. Everybody kind of associated the hat with Panama, even though they're made uh, in Ecuador. And so, again, different kinds of materials, a different uh, shape of hat. This one's really easy to kind of mold and change the shape uh, as it gets humid or gets a little bit of wet. Um, that's kind of what it's designed to do. Another type of straw hat that is kind of the opposite of that one is not very malleable is the boater or the skimmer. This one is kind of a tough material. You'll see these are really popular in the 1890s uh, into the 1930s in the summer, depending on uh, when and where uh, you are. You, a lot of people think of like barbershop quartets wearing these. That would have been popular in the 1890s. Uh, I always think of the FBI uh, in like the 1920s. Uh, these were really popular with them uh, for whatever reason. You see a bunch of guys in these straw hats in a touring car. Uh, it's G-men, you know, they're coming for you. Um, so this is another one. This one, uh, actually the, the band, the hat, the sweat band, uh, kind of fell out because this one's a bit of an older hat, but you can see seven and a half. There's your, uh, hat size on these. And this one is manufactured by Stetson. And I've got one more kind of summer hat that I always like, and it's the pith helmet. Um, these are, uh, nobody really wears these unless you're kind of being goofy, but I don't mind doing that. I wear it. It is a helmet. It is made out of material called pith. So it's kind of like 
cork. Uh, it's really, really lightweight. It lets a lot of uh, moisture out. This one is kind of copied from a military model you might have seen uh, in places like the Boer War or something like that. But I also have this guy. It's another type of pith helmet. You might think of like an explorer in a deep, dark jungle, but it's really nice. I've worn this when it's really hot and muggy out. This kind I like is called a Bombay Bowler, and you can kind of uh, tell why. When you compare the uh, Bombay Bowler here made out of pith, uh, to the Dark Bowler, if you were an Englishman visiting India, you can guess which kind uh, you would rather wear. This is lightweight and breathes really well. This one uh, I picked up from an antique shop, and one of my favorite parts is the lining. Uh, is full of um, this kind of like learn uh, Hindi or learn Urdu. It looks like somebody gave up on their phrase book, ripped out the pages, and used it to line their hat because... They didn't get very far. So kind of a neat piece. Anyway, a little bit different than a field trip today. We all stayed uh, in one spot here uh, near my dresser and looked at a couple of hats. If this is something you thought was interesting, cool. Let me know. If you thought this was utterly boring and a real waste of your time, I'm sorry. Um, but a great way to look at something historical right in your own house. Uh, everybody's got collections or things they collect. It's no surprise that I collect historic items, working for a museum, loving history my whole life. Hopefully uh, the weather will cooperate a little bit more in the near future. We go outside and look at some more architecture. Um, we are like two people away from having 10,000 likes on Facebook. So that's pretty cool. So uh, if you like this, share this with your friends. Tell your friends about it. Um, and support Port Huron Museums. Again, Andrew Kircher with Port Huron Museums. Thanks for coming along, and hopefully you learned something about hats. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, and until next time.